А следващият презентатор е гост от Холандия, затова ще направя представянето на английски. Този следобед има няколко лектора, които са в чужбина. Моля ви аплодисменти първо, за да го подкрепим. Окей, so I have a question for you. How many of you are software developers? Can you raise your hands? I'm not working for an HR company, so I won't share your details, don't worry. But the next presentation is about front-end development, and we have an international speaker coming from the Netherlands. So please, a round of applause for Shardo uh, Janssen, who's coming here. Come on, let's do it again. <laughs> That's another thing. The stage is yours. Uh, thank you, you pronounced it pretty bad, uh, pretty good, but that's uh, all right. Uh, hi, I'm Sharo, this is my first time speaking anywhere, so I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> Nothing goes as planned, so this is going to be really interesting. Um, I'm a front-end developer at Yoast.com, or at Yoast. I built a website at Yoast.com, I'm also the product owner. And yeah, I really want to talk about how I taught myself front-end development. And uh, I will I'll give you some lessons in how I did that. So first up, who knows frame sets? That's not a lot of people. Frame sets were the core of each website I started with. That was 2002. They were awesome. They were really awesome and really easy to build websites. Websites in 2002 looked something around this. It was easy, it was flat, it was meant to I put up my old website from 2002, but I couldn't find it anymore, so I think my hard disk broke or I removed it. But it's, uh, yeah, it was an interesting time. We, I created every website I made in front page. Anyone knows front page? My community front page? Yeah, it has more people. They had a great UI, and that was my first experience with, with building websites using the UI. I don't think anyone ever said, yeah, I started front end development. I wrote down a diff in HTML, I said float right, and it actually floated on the right side. That never ever happened. So in 2002, I uh, built my first, first website, it was for my family. Uh, my dad come from a big family and they wanted to show off all the pictures of all their, all, uh, all their meetings. And that was pretty well, and do, with the UI you can do lots of cool stuff. Like this one, who knows the mark you? Yeah, that's awesome. I tried to move it and slide it in, but it didn't work. And in the end, we're running a PDF, so it wouldn't work anyway. But uh, yeah, the, the, oh, went too far. The marquee was awesome. It still works. It's still valid. Um, and I still use it some, sometimes to debug and all that kind of stuff, so I know where something happens. But it's, that, that was awesome. And, but, I was kind of done with, with all the UE stuff we had on, on, in front page, so we had to move on, and the only thing you can move on if you no longer use the user interface, you start copy and pasting. And copy and pasting is perfectly fine when you're a new developer. If you have Stack Overflow, copy paste every fucking thing. That's awesome. Well, it no, it has no, no one that ever says, yeah, it's Stack Overflow, that probably won't work. Yeah, if you have a big project, that probably won't work. But if you have a small product, you're new, and you just need, need, a, need a cursor that bursts out fireworks or something, use Stack Overflow or something like that, they have the answer. And for new, new people, small issues, uh, start, starting issues, it's perfectly fine. But please, please, copy-paste everything when you're new. But that also means, because it's Stack Overflow, you break everything, or twice, or like 10 times, so please back up frequently. I made my website like 10 times because everything broke, thanks to Stack Overflow. In 2007, I was an intern at uh, uh, Payday Web Edit, a small company in the Netherlands. It was uh, located in an old barn, chickens running everywhere, there were like 10 employees. And during the internship, internship, I really um, learned to talk to customers and all that kind of stuff. But we made our first websites, and we did that with this. We had a table, three columns, middle column had a set width, 
and that's your basic of the most simple way of centering your website and this was completely valid in, back in 2017 to build a website. It was not pretty, we know there were diffs, but this was way faster. This is actually the way I built my first around 75 websites. So that goes, yeah, that, that goes a long way, but the reason I, I created 50, 75 websites in just six months is because I repeated myself 70, 50 to 75 times. Every time I did it again, I knew more. I knew every little bit that could go wrong. And in this way, you know every little part of your code. So please, if you're new to front-end development, recreate or uh, reproduce everything, re repeat yourself, try to do it in lots of ways because that's the only way you learn and grow as a developer. So where am I? I haven't, I'm running two slides at the same time, really interesting. But uh, 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 in 2017, when the tables are done, that's the only thing we did at the company because that generated the most money. Each uh, four hours, you could complete a new website for a sim simple uh, business. But it got boring, so I, I need new stuff. I need to, need to be enthusiastic again. So in this way, I started to uh, reproduce and recreate everything I saw online. If I saw a new layout I didn't knew, I tried to recreate it. If I saw some animation, I tried to recreate it. This is an easy way of learning new things. But you have to be open-minded. You have to look further than what you know already. If you know uh, everything about HTML and CSS, try a little bit J uh, JavaScript to make, to make sure y you know more code. Uh, where am I? Um, in 2012, I was another intern at a different company. I had a lot of internships, five in total. And this was the website of that company. It was a, a web shop selling kids' toys, but we also, on the side, sell some adult toys, if you know what I mean. It was really interesting if you see all those orders coming in. And then... <laughs> Um, yeah, it, we lost, used lots of websites. Uh, uh, we built lots of websites. We built them all with Joomla. And that's something you don't want to hear around here in, at the WordPress community. But Joomla is, was pretty good at that, that time. It was really easy, easy, easy to, to, um, to quickly develop simple websites. And process op it was open source, it was cheap, and it does the job. So, that, that was... Uh, my way of, of increasing my knowledge uh, through other open source uh, platforms. But my mentor, he saw, yeah, Shadow, you're really good at building websites, but you have no fucking clue what the UI does. You have no clue how analytics work. All that kind of stuff I had no clue from. So he showed me everything. He showed me analytics. He showed me UI. He showed me how conversion works. What is a CDN? How do you increase site speed? How to uh, minify a CSS file and why? And there's are all kinds of things you also have to learn as a front-end developer. It's not just HTML and CSS or your, front, your, your little bit of code where you're into. You're, it's a whole unit that you have to learn. Because in the end, you, you have to look on beyond your code. You're the last, last, last line of defense. When you're chasing a button over here, you get a new design, you have to implement a new button. Why, and, and the button is a little bigger. Do you simply implement this button, or do you first ask, is this correct? In the whole website, the button is 40 pixels high. Now we're making one of 50 pixels high. Is that, is that, uh, is that accidentally? Is it on purpose? If so, why is that on purpose? You should ask more than only the things you, you're, you're building and working for. You, you have to look around to be more, uh, more open. Let me see where the, I am. In 2013, my last internship, I promise, I, <laughs> I started at uh, Bureau Fat as a, a small agency, in, uh, also in the Netherlands, of course. Uh, there was a website back then. I were a closed source CMS. It was uh, Visual Basics, 
um, or only the HTML, CSS, visual basic, it's way too hard for me. I have no clue what they're doing. But uh, we have a great team, we have lots of people in the, co uh, of, uh, in the company, and we had some SEO people, we had some content marketers, we had some branding marketers, we had UX marketers. We did a shitload of work, but we also drank a shitload of alcohol. The parties were really amazing. And then so at one moment, something popped up. This ministry was transferred from Saudi Arabia, asked us to build us a website, or build them a website. The problem was that website had to be in WordPress. At that point, I never touched any PHP, I never touched a WordPress website. So as a wise developer, I say, well, I, I would love to make this website, but we can't do it in WordPress. And then boss simply told me, uh, well, we have a problem. I already accepted the project, and it has to be done by Saturday, and it was Tuesday. So I was, I was panicking pretty hard, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had, we had to go, but uh, we had to do it, but you had no clue of how I should do that. So I had to know how I could find my information, and that's not something like uh, going to uh, uh, from, from documentation from WordPress, but it's also learn how, uh, what are the synonyms for some kind of words. What, how can you, uh, what are the, how, how do you pronounce it in English? If you're Bulgarian and that's your native language and you never said anything in English, that language has a shitload of documentation. My own language, Dutch, has none. So I had to learn English from, for, for everything I do. But also you need to learn how to Google. Learning to Google is actually a thing. You can just, you can simply write up whatever you want and search. There are lots of, uh, it's almost a regex engine, a search engine box these days where you can really specify what you're looking for and in which manner. But it's what hard. But I manage it. Stack Overflow I mentioned, saved my day. I, <laughs> I, I, I think 80% of the whole website was Stack Overflow copies and it worked, but yeah, and I didn't know how to debug or anything, but hey, it worked. But it also showed me that I'm not the first one with that problem. I definitely knew how to implement a menu in WordPress, so I go to how to implement a menu and I had like a thousand results how to implement a simple WordPress menu. When you're new to front-end development, you're not the first one to experience problems. You're not working on complex six, uh, systems that nobody has ever seen, or a code base that is so big you, you can't even wrap your head around it. When you're new, everybody has done this already. Just Google it. Just search for it. It's important to know that you're not the first one with that problem. So in 2016, same company, three years later, I was a, a, a team lead, as we call them, team captain. I really hated that, that, that term. And every website we, we built, I, um, yeah, I was the boss. I had said, yeah, that's good, that's fine. And uh, yeah, really nice spot. And if we didn't like something, I could say, no, fuck it. We won't do that, and we didn't. So there was, there was interesting times. And uh, the company grew at a basic team uh, that we set up for each website, and the production speeded up. But also, our projects were getting bigger. And one of the problems we had is that we were selling websites between 10 and 25,000 euros. We didn't even do backups. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't do version control, we just said, yeah, fuck it, we do it live. And that's really great if you want to move fast and break things. <laughs> What is not if you're, 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 you're investing your, your, your company and your time in really valuable projects. I don't want to be responsible for a website that break down because I have to do something live because we don't want to or, uh, make sure we're running a stage, stage version of the website. It's not, it's not something that happened at the company. And yeah, it, it, I, that, that was hard for me because I really loved that company and, and I wanted to move, move further. I wanted to help them grow and it got bigger, but it just didn't happen. I waited a year, talked with my boss, and it didn't happen. 
So I change the jobs. And I can tell you, if you're new and you think, yeah, I can't learn anywhere, anything from, from, from this spot at this moment, change your job. Because changing your job can give you new insights, can give you new visions of how to do things. You talk to new people, you get new opportunities. You're not stuck in the same rhythm as every other day. You have new challenges. Please, guys, change jobs when you have to, when you think you're stuck. So in 2017, I was 27 years old at that moment, I had a little deal too about it, joined Joe's. And Joe's is a pretty well-known company. I was nervous the first day, even more nervous than I am now. And um, there was a little kid, 20, 21 years old, and he showed me around, set up my working uh, environment, because that was mandatory for, for the company. He set up Git, he set up Yarn, he set up, uh, uh, we work in Kaban, we're doing things on the command line, I never touched the freaking command line, that thing is scary. But he did uh, all, all those things for me, and uh, at one point I asked something, and he said, no, no, I'm not the right person to answer that. Go to that guy, he knows way more about that subject. And because he said that, he reminded me that you do, not need, you do not need to know everything about your field. When you're a dev developer, you don't need to know every language. You don't need to know every little bit of PHP. It's just simply not possible. But he knew exactly the persons who were experts at those moments. When you needed something for something particular, he knew who the expert was and he moved to them. He redirected the question just to make sure the quality was always, always great. And that was just a kid from 20 years old learning that from me, fresh out of school. But when you're at Joe's, you sometimes see people running around. They know, hey, that's a familiar face. That guy has a huge following base on Twitter or something. And that's scary. And for me, that's really scary. Uh, I'm a big introvert. I find it really, really sc scary to stand in front of lots of people like you guys, um, standing in a, in a great hall, everybody watching at me. Like, like how can I, how did I trick you <laughs> listening to me today? But people, people run around, and it. it I always looked up to people with a high status or more knowledge. One, yeah, I should listen to them because they're better. But it's not true. It's it's uh, it's it's not better. Everybody is the same. Everybody has it should have the same values. But in WordPress, uh, especially the WordPress community, everyone is pretty equal. At least we try to be equal. You just had a talk from Alexander. He pointed out some great things. But everyone here wants to help and wants to help you progress and, uh, comp and help you move forward. So please ask questions if you're in the community. If you have questions about, uh, about how something works, ask community. Go on Twitter, tweet out something, someone important, and probably he will answer your questions. Most of us are developers, and I think all of us are passionate about our work. Our developers just want to talk about what we do, what we love. And I think everybody likes that. If you like horses, you preferably talk about horses. Please don't do me. I hate horses. But if you're passionate about something, we are all passionate about WordPress. You can talk with anyone and you can ask anyone for anything. And so if you have a question for me, I'm Shadow. You can find me on social media. I was hoping that it would stretch a little longer, but half the notes I couldn't read. So it was a tiny bit short. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. <laughs> Anyone something feel really anxious right now? <laughs> Hi, thank you for the talk, that's nice.
Uh, and it created that other people started from kind of the same place <laughs> as I did. So I, I have a bit of a controversial question. Sure. I see that you started the, what I would consider the, the original front end. Because yeah. what I have found in recent years is, you know, when, what do you think about the phenomenon where now if we say we search for a front end person, it, 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 turns down, it turns out that they're searching for JavaScript developer. And so how, <laughs> you know, that, that question, how do we now uh, discriminate between uh, HTML, CSS development and doing layouts and the visual part, which was considered to be the front end, and the JavaScript development, which is, I would say, development, where a lot of logic has moved to the front end. So how do we you know, define now those new categories, in your opinion? I, th I think it's a really good question. When I'm, when I'm moving jobs, I, that, that was one of the parts I, I really had, I really struggled with. I was a front end developer, that, that was my function, I thought I was. And when I was looking up all, all the, uh, what do you call it, um, vacatures in the Netherlands, um, job descriptions, thanks for Kempkes. Um, when I was looking at the job description, everybody was asking me, yeah, do you know React for like five years? That's not possible, but hey, you're still asking it. And all that, all that kind of stuff pops up and, and, and JavaScript and I was like, but that, is that front end development? That, 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 that is your question. I, don't, I, don't, I do think it's front end development, but what you, you have to de divide that between really good HTML really good accessible HTML and, and, and CSS and, and have separate JavaScript uh, people. But you have to know the basics of each other. You always need, need the basics of each other because uh, you have to, uh, when you build a, build a website and, and you have to write code, you have to know the people who, who will work with your code and, and you have to know what you're going to do. So you have to, uh, you have to combine those powers. And I think uh, you should aim for uh, uh, specialization, and above that, uh, some manager that has a general overview of all kinds of things. But if you on, on a work floor, if you have if you have specializations, like one goes HTML, CSS, and one goes JavaScript, and one goes uh, React for, for JavaScript. I I don't know what, what what's out there anywhere. I think that's most important. All right. Uh, hi there. Hi. Uh, my name is Marin, uh, a software engineer at Automatic. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I was curious about whether, um, do you think that WordPress uh, has helped you be a better developer? And do you think that you would have been as good as you are now if WordPress hasn't been there? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. It's, it's I absolutely think, thanks to WordPress, I'm a better developer right now. Um, it helped me evolve. It made me, uh, gave me possibilities to use op uh, uh, side projects with, the, with WordPress. Before I was working with a closed system, I couldn't work it outside of the, uh, outside of the office, but, so I could never make a website for, for friends or family. And now I can, and I can play around 24-7 and just increasing my knowledge and that was not possible before and thanks to WordPress the, and, and with all the documentation there is uh, it's way easier to learn and to find your information and that that's really important that we should well, funny funny thing last couple months ago I was working with Gutenberg and um, that's a really pain in the ass if you're not into JavaScript 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 what is it and I was looking at the documentation, and it was horrible. I, 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 was, I was like, how, how, can I, 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 how can I do that? I can no, no longer copy-paste it into my project, because I have to install ES6 next, or, or all that kind of stuff. Like, we're, we're stepping back again. Uh, we had great documentation uh, in, uh, explaining everything with all great code snippets, and now we're going back to random content explaining something that you don't understand. And, um, yeah, and that, that was really good with, with WordPress, and we should, should protect that. Yeah. Thank you. I hope that answers your you. question. Thank you. Anyone in the middle? Uh, 
Uh, have you experienced a situation when somebody, for example, a client, uh, was not as satisfied from your website? The Which website I, you, you, you created, and if yes, uh, how you reacted? What was your rea reaction? Could you repeat the question, please? Have, uh, have you experienced a situation when a client was not satisfied from the website you created? Of course, <laughs> of course, everybody does. I think. I think most of the people are are, are pretty fun if you if you um, show them the, the final uh, final side. But you always have some people that, that dislike what you did. But um, most of the time, that's something that goes wrong in the process. So uh, when you're talking to them and you have a feeling you understand what they want, please confirm that. Uh, make notes during conversations and uh, make sure they validate that those notes so you're on the same page. When you create the design, first check the design before you implement it. Um, uh, all, the, all that kind of stuff. So it's more of a process thing when, when it's happened and not so much, uh, yeah, the website sucked when everything was great. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. No one? In that case, uh, thank you, and uh, I'll stick around in the lobby. Thank you very much for the amazing talk. Uh, thank you very much for the amazing talk. It was fantastic. Uh, that was short.